This is exactly right. Hello, welcome. This is my favorite murder. The mini-sode. That's right. Coming at you. Live from our brand new recording studios. The Exactly Right Recording Studios is the first time we've ever recorded in them. We're up on, a, it's a mountain up uh-huh. on the eastern uh, side of Los Angeles. Mm-hmm. There's um, a um, one of those big fluffy dogs with a whiskey barrel around his neck. He rec- rescued us out of our cars because yeah. we drove up here. We got stuck in the snow. There was a blizzard. Yeah. There was a... Uh, it seemed all seemed lost. Yep. And then the St. Bernard came out of nowhere. Hashtag adopt, don't shop. <laughs> Hashtag did we save him or did he save us? He saved us, literally. Hashtag dog is my co-pilot. <laughs> um, so thank you for joining us. It's Steven, do we sound good? I think you guys sound beautiful. Okay. It's, thank you. it's great. We're like cozy. Yeah. Um, this might not be what the final studio looks like, but I God, think it's I hope a- not. <laughs> we've, we've really slapped some shit together right yeah. now. We're sitting at a table made of matchsticks. Um, <laughs> it's all very tenuous, but mm-hmm. because it's day one. It's day one. We're going to see how this goes. If we need to go back to the pod loft for like the vibe and shit, right. we can always do that. Yeah. What's our vibe like, what? like in here? I think our vibe is so different in here. It's so different. I really want to turn the lights out, but we have to read these um, emails. <laughs> so right. I'm not going to. Well, that's this is, you know, day one here. Right. Okay. We'll build up, um, we'll get r- recessed lighting. Yes, yes. And a lighting we'll get director. The dog, the dog to wear a little head. What are those little head things when you're going hiking? Like a GoPro. Oh, like a miner's light? Yes. Okay. He'll so St. Bernard and a miner's light will walk through the studio. Yeah. God, this is going to be great. Um, this is a mini where We read you the shit that you send us. That's right. These are all rando emails about interesting things of your lives. Karen goes first. Are you ready? Yes. Why can't... Why I Can't Trust Ice Cream Trucks, my hometown story. All right. Hello to Karen, Georgia, and Steven. Our family grew up in a large and friendly neighborhood in Columbia, Tennessee, outside of Nashville. In the summers, our nights mainly consisted of playing outside until dark, uh, and for my fat, Big Mac-loving fifth grade self... (laughs) Waiting for the ice cream truck to stop by. Um, I'm still paying for the Big Macs, hence the nightly walks. That's right. Um, One afternoon, way too late in the summer season, my sisters and I were in the house doing uh, working on homework, and we heard the ice cream truck coming around the neighborhood and ran to ask for permission to meet it. The only running I ever did. (laughs) (laughs) The best. Um, My dad made me stay in to study, but my two younger sisters went out to buy us all ice cream. Not fair. Now listen to this. Okay. My dad and I noticed that it was taking longer than usual. Mm-hmm. And when the girls came back in with our ice cream, they were carrying a piece of paper too. Mm-mm. My dad asked what it was and took it from them, noticing that a phone number mm-hmm. was written on it. Mm-hmm. The girls cluelessly explained that the old man who uh, whom we had bought ice cream from many times before mm-hmm. began asking them questions and gave them the paper. He told them that if we ever wanted ice cream <gasps> at any time of the day, no. even in the winter, we could call him and he would come to our house. No. And he added that he was also available for our slumber parties, <gasps> and we would be able to, sh- and he would be able to show up at any time, even at three in the morning. Don't, no, don't, don't do that. It's happened. My dad immediately called the police, <laughs> and we all ate our ice cream while we waited for them to show up. <laughs> All they could do was tell us to let them know if he ever came back. We never saw him again. And needless to say, it was a long time before we could ever trust another ice cream man again. To this day, I still get butterflies in my stomach when I hear the ice cream truck. (laughs) Thinking about all the crazy things that could have happened had that man ever come back. Uh, Stay sexy and always take ice cream from strangers, but never invite them to your slumber parties. (laughs) Sutherland. But what if he really was just this nice old man who was so lonely and wanted to go to little girls' slumber parties yeah, at that's, three in the morning? There's the overstep. Like you've, a normal person. You've highlighted the issue because there's. <laughs> it's nice to be nice. Sell ice cream. Do what you want. Keep your fucking digits to yourself sure. in all ways. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, we have a huge ice cream man contingent listening to these episodes. I know. 
So we really need them to hear us. That's right. Don't give your phone numbers out. Okay. This is called My Cousin's Dad Was on America's Most Wanted. Yes. Hey, y'all. I've just recently been put onto your podcast by my coworker. <laughs> and since then, you've been the soundtrack to my work week. This hometown, what's up, Central Jersey? They say, is everything <laughs> but murder. It's pretty crazy. Growing up, I remember lots of whispering about my aunt's new boyfriend, who my parents slash relatives believed to be a drug dealer. Mm. I thought they were just being antiquated and discriminatory, discriminatory because of his tattoos. But apparently, I was also just a dumb 10-year-old who knew nothing thing about anything. Turns out my aunt's boyfriend and eventually father of my little cousin was a drug dealer. Mm. One with an all caps tight grip on the cocaine production slash distribution within Newark and Elizabeth. He didn't just fucking distribute no, that, no. that blow around Elizabeth and Newark. He didn't need a quick buck and, you know, he couldn't get a job and no. all this. He he made it was a kingpin. He had a science lab coat and he was beaker pouring beakers back and forth making Production coke. Production distribution. Hey. Holy shit. After serving time for kidnapping a rival gang member, Uh-oh. throwing him in his own truck and then firing at said truck, and that <laughs> says homeboy survived, <laughs> police began a five-month investigation which led to 23 arrests and the seizure of seven pounds of cocaine. Shit. Is that a lot of cocaine? It's, a, it's plenty. 800 folds of heroin. I didn't okay. know heroin came in folds. <laughs> it's little, little pieces of People magazine oh. all folded up. It's that they were like, do you know what a a group of ravens is called a heroin fold (laughs) it's a fold of heroines right outside my window that's right two handguns and an ak-47 rifle from one of his trap houses oh more more lingo i love trap music Mm. in newark he managed to escape arrest not once not twice but three times twice by outrunning police through (laughs) six lanes of traffic Oh, did I mention he was a high school track star? Yes. And then he compl- and then he completely disappeared in the summer of 2009. My aunt and cousin just ran off into the sunset. Go by down the freeway. <laughs> Instead of going across traffic, he just went just with went it. Went along with it. You have to go with traffic. And he's still running today. <laughs> Forest. Uh, my aunt and cousin, who was about six years old at the time, knew nothing of his whereabouts and didn't hear from him until he turned himself into the Union County Sheriff's Office in 2012, citing that he wanted a chance to be in his son's life again. Oh, the drug dealer gone good. There is redemption here. In July of 2017, he was sentenced to 37 years, of which he must serve 30 before being eligible for parole. Jesus Christ. Damn, he must have been high up. It's crazy to think that this was the same man who'd often spare us, my many cousins and I, a few bucks for the ice ice cream truck whoa there's a theme here automatic theme um or to run down to the corner bodega though i guess when you're making nearly seven hundred thousand dollars a week you can spare some change (laughs) you better buy some ice cream (laughs) stay sexy and maybe do some research on your new boyfriend love lily nice amazing oh i you know isn't that the the human story that we're all drug dealers and we're all guys that, that float you for some ice cream? That's right. It's really it nice. Just because you're a drug dealer doesn't make you a bad guy. No, sometimes drug dealers just want you to get nice and high <laughs> and make money off you. We're kidding, everyone. We're this kidding. Is not any true. Don't do drugs. Don't do them very often. <laughs> Try not to do them that much. <laughs> Don't have a dealer. Be Don't more be, casual. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just borrow it at parties and from friends. <laughs> That's right. Keep Keep using the word borrow. <laughs> They'll love it. Here's the subject line is first responder story. Feel good. Oh, good. Hey, y'all. Do you keep saying, by the way, the lighthearted now when everyone's like, so, so, da, 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 lighthearted. It's question mark at the end of lighthearted. <laughs> I, every single one I got that said lighthearted was lighthearted. Lighthearted? It's kind of not. You tell me. Yeah. There's still blood. Okay. Hey, y'all. I never thought I'd have anything to share with you guys until recently when Karen was telling the story in episode 146 about the jaws of life and what first responders did before they had access to that tool. Uh, And this is my personal sidebar. I kind of pretty much got that wrong and heard from (laughs) lots and lots of very uh, kind and um, experienced firemen who were like, here's actually how it works. Firemen and women, Mm -hmm. true. Um, I was Fire people. (laughs) Is that what they're called? The The fire people. The people of fire. Um, Fire starters sent in emails and basically I got one tiny aspect of it right but the actual shape and movement and everything else was wrong right uh but we knew that was going to happen didn't we that's okay here (laughs) this is a safe space at exactly right offices oh we're gonna burn some sage after this that's right and the fucking house down too what if we accidentally (laughs) just burn this whole place down like sorry neighbors okay 
My dad's best friend, who had always been like my uncle, was a volunteer firefighter in a small town in Minnesota. He's naturally big, but has never been a huge weightlifter or anything. This is an important detail, I promise. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. When I was a kid, my dad's friend had to go to the scene of a terrible car accident. A a mom and her toddler were stuck inside a car, which was on fire. While everyone else was trying to figure out how to get them out, he walked up to the car, adrenaline pumping, and ripped the door off the car. (gasps) Who knows what would have happened if he hadn't done that? It uh, it happened probably 25 years ago, and I still get chills when I hear about it. It's one of the many reasons I love my like an uncle friend. Thanks for reading. Love you guys. SSDGM Julie. Holy shit. Now, there is a, this reminded me, there's a a family story, and it always changed of who is the person that did it, which is how you know it's an urban myth. Right. Um, But I still love it anyway. That a, a, the story was it was my grandmother. Um, and then somebody corrected me and was like, no, it was her mother. Right, right. One of those, uh, got into a car scent. They drove up kids trapped in the car. Mm. Oh no, no. The father trapped under the car and mm. she walked up and picked the car up ah. and the guy got out from under the car. And they modeled the, uh, jaws of life after this guy and your great grandma. Yes. That's and Superman after my great grandma. Oh my god! <laughs> wow, <laughs> I know it's not good. Uh, oh, but I heard I learned at Thanksgiving. I've told the story several times that my grandfather was killed in a bar fight, got stabbed in a bar fight. <laughs> I've told you that, right? Yeah, that's I'm insane. combining two stories. My sister's like, "That's not true at all. You're <laughs> combining two stories." And even though he died under suspicious circumstances, it was not um, a knife fight in the alley behind a bar. But did he get in a knife fight in the alley behind, behind a bar once? We it was it was he got rolled basically uh, but it was much less the jets and the sharks and m- much more kind of tragic and it's a different family story of somebody else that died in a knife fight outside a bar well you're gonna need to like have this as your story one week yeah yeah oh it's amazing crazy awful i'm sorry no no this i'm is- sorry for lying constantly <laughs> i'm just gonna tell you the beginning of this uh subject line okay uh uncle was a mooney okay is this an uncle theme Steven, it might be. Did you do that on purpose? No, I think they've just been sending a lot. I think because around Thanksgiving, oh, probably a lot of family stuff yeah, coming yeah, in. Uncles, yeah. ice cream. Great. Crime. Hey, MFM fam. So my uncle was in the Mooney cult yes. for years. Let's call him Tom. My mom told me this story back when I was probably 20 or so. When Tom was in college in North Carolina in the 70s, he went uh, to a dinner slash lock-in. Well, it turned out to be a brainwashing washing, washing you got it. session for the Mooney cult. Which one was the Mooney cult? They're the robes and shit? No, that... I think they're all robes. They're, there's a lot of robes, but the Moonies were the ones that sold... They uh, they get married en masse, so oh. it's Reverend Moon, and then there's like 50,000 okay. people get married, and they've never met the other person. Okay, that's, this is in this. Okay. Um, the, the, the brainwashing session. He quickly fell out of his day-to-day activities and spent all his time selling these magazines for Reverend Moon. My grandparents started to get worried because they hadn't heard from him in weeks. My mom has a family. My mom has family in Tennessee, and one day their cousin, Mark, was at the gas station in his town in Tennessee when he sees his cousin, Tom. He kept shouting, hey, Tom, what are you doing in Tennessee? Tom completely ignored him. Mm -hmm. Mark said Tom seemed really out of it, really spacey. Mark ran home to tell his parents, and they called my grandparents and right away told them to go back and get him. They all run back to the gas station and basically kidnap him away from the Moonies and drive him back to North Carolina. Once there, my grandparents had a long talk, not really sure how long he was home or what he said because he went back to school and and back to the Moonies. Um, But this time he contacted his parents regularly. That's all you got to do if you're going to join a cult. I guess that's true, but then also don't believe that they're against you right and don't join a cult (laughs) (laughs) step one don't believe they're against you step two step three stop it stop it so years down the road my uncle tom was married to his wife barb with 300 other people by reverend moon so tom and barb start having kids and a couple in the cult couldn't have kids so reverend moon told tom that he and barb are to have a child and it will be given to the other couple oh no all caps so they fucking did oh no just kind of lovely but not for the cult (laughs) not with a cult well, no. Also, it's your own kid. I don't know. Yeah, you're too. It's lovely if it's far away and you didn't want the child. You shouldn't be able to give your kid away like that. No. Oh, I don't think you are. I think they're operating outside the law right. in that church. No, and, but I mean, like, personally, be like, great, we'll oh, have another yes. one. You shouldn't agree to it. Yeah, it shouldn't be, be fine. fine with you. No. There's some walls that have been broken down that can't be built Absolutely. back up. Absolutely. I'm not saying adoption is bad. It's a beautiful thing. That's yeah. not what this is. It's the intercult adoption that we are talking about. Right. We love paperwork. <laughs> A few of 
his kids are still involved with the Moonies. Holy shit. The, the wild thing is no one in our family knew about this until Tom slipped up and said something about Brett. Oh, who the fuck is Brett? Everyone asked. <laughs> My uncle has a, has long since left the cult and his wife, but Brett does know who his biological parents and four brothers are. Wow. So thanks for taking the time to read this, and I can't wait to see you in Milwaukee. SSTGM Amelia. Wow. Crazy. Um, yeah, that cult is, it just doesn't go away. They're moony. It, <laughs> they're all over the GD map. <laughs> there is um, a really good made-for-TV movie that I've already talked about on the show. If you're interested in the moonies and the ways of how you get into something like that, mm-hmm. um, and I will tell you what it is after. Great. <laughs> I can't remember. Wait one second. There it is. Ticket to Heaven. Ticket to Heaven? It's a movie called Ticket to Heaven. And I swear to God, I don't know what it's on. It's very old. I think it's from the 90s. or No, 81. Nice. It's so old. You have to watch it. Okay. okay. One, of the, one of my better recommendations so far. Just really pulled it off. It was <laughs> slick. It was smooth. The subject line is The Ghost of Karen Carpenter. Oh, my God. Are you ready? I am ready. Hello, Not who you're named after? God, I keep interrupting you. I'm <laughs> no, so sorry. no, no, no. Are you kidding? That's all I've done <laughs> this whole time. Uh, hello, Karen, Georgia, Stephen, and Pets. I've been meaning to write in this story for a while now, but it wasn't until today when Karen mentioned the ghost of Karen Carpenter on the minisode that I knew I had to share with you all. My dad has worked as a mortician his entire working career, starting in Idaho and later in L.A. after he and my mom moved to Southern California in the 80s. Cool. Uh, he has had so many wonderful stories, including burying Rita Hayworth. <laughs> <gasps> wow. I wouldn't call that wonderful. Is that what you're laughing about? <laughs> <laughs> Just a celebration of the death w- of Rita Hayworth. I had a wonderful day at work today, <laughs> darling. Let me tell you. I was finally able to bury that woman. <laughs> I always hated her her work. (laughs) She's my greatest rival (laughs) in the mortician industry. Okay. Sorry. We know what you mean. Wonderful stories, including bearing Rita Hayworth in parentheses, of which there are newspaper photos of him carrying her casket down the stairs of the church preceding her funeral. Wow. Living in a haunted apartment of a mortuary where doors would open and close. Yes. Fuck. And picking up a man who died at a sugar factory. (gasps) Parentheses. I'll spare you the details. Oh, he fell in a thing. Oh, it's a big, I bet you he fell in a thing. He smothered on sugar. Oh. That's how I'm going to die. <laughs> in my living room. I don't want to ever be in a vat of things and get stuck in it. Trying That's my, like, to swallow. Trying to be oh, like, Whenever I read those stories, I get fucking... I get so bummed. It's the worst. Oh, it's the worst. Let's and talk about it. That. Also, it also... It leaves this little bit of a funny joke mark at the end of yeah, your death, which There's sucks. no dignity in it. Right. It's just a huge bummer. It's a terrible death and then a little bit of like... Today in weird news, where you're like, I fucking died, you assholes. Like your story about the molasses fucking flood. It's like, wow, that's hilarious. And you're like, but people die. Like, that's not as hilarious. It's not hilarious at all. It's like somebody was standing there going about their business, and then a 40-foot wave of molasses killed them. Yeah. The end. And then every... Yeah. Et cetera, et cetera. That's what this whole podcast is, is can you fucking believe it? Can you fucking believe this? Um, Okay. But it's his one uh, story about Karen Carpenter that has always fascinated me. When Karen first passed away, she was buried at the Forest Lawn Cemetery in Cypress, California. But in 2003, her family decided to disinter her body and bury her at Pierce Brothers Valley Oaks Memorial Park in Westlake Village. Oh, that's a much better place. It's so much better yeah. for everybody. A longtime industry friend of my dad's was responsible for picking Mrs. Carpenter up. I, I think it's Miss uh, Carpenter up and transporting her to her second and final resting place. While en route from cemetery A to cemetery B, his hearse broke down on the side of the road. <gasps> and what might you ask came on the radio at just that no! very moment. The sweet serenading voice of Karen Carpenter singing, we've only just begun. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god that is this is such a dad story i love that's it the funniest possible song that could play yeah. i know my dad's friend was spooked by the incident but i like to think it was karen's way of having a little fun from the great beyond <laughs> she's like let, let me have a minute not in a grave and just like chill out here yes can you just pull over by the side of the road and i'm gonna <laughs> prank you because i just want one last prank yes thank you for all that you do especially being so vocal about mental health and making the rest of us murderinos feel like we're not alone stay sexy and watch out for ghosts of 1970 pop stars playing practical jokes, <laughs> Devin. Amazing. <laughs> With America's number one meal kit, HelloFresh, you'll get easy seasonal recipes and pre-measured ingredients delivered right to your door. All you have to do is cook and enjoy. HelloFresh makes cooking delicious meals at home a reality. 
From step-by-step -step recipes to pre-measured ingredients, you'll have everything you need to get a wow-worthy dinner on the table in about 30 minutes. Say goodbye to endless grocery store trips and takeout. HelloFresh has you covered. There's something for everyone, from family recipes to calorie smart and vegetarian, and fun menu series like Hall of Fame and, and Kraft Burgers. HelloFresh has more five-star recipes than any other meal kit, so you'll know you're getting something incredible. HelloFresh is flexible, and it fits your lifestyle, easily change your delivery days, food preferences and skip a week whenever you need. Break out of your dinner rut and make deliciousness part of every week with HelloFresh. I love that even though HelloFresh is super easy and they make it really basic and like straightforward, you still feel like you're cooking this like incredible home cooked dinner and that makes me feel good about myself. And that instead of just ordering takeout, I'm actually making something and preparing something at home and that just, it feels good. So for $80 off your first month of HelloFresh, go to HelloFresh.com slash Murder80 and enter Murder80. It's like receiving eight meals for free only at HelloFresh.com slash Murder80, promo code Murder80. Goodbye. Um, that's amazing. Okay, this is just a um a nice email. Okay. It's not a hometown, but uh so update Portland girl whose house burned down. Oh. Remember the girl we met? We met a girl at uh, one of the Portland shows who's really lovely. Uh, and her fucking house had just burned it down. It had just burned down. Was it the same day or like that week? It was like that week. Yeah. It was um, It was a lot. I think she says something about it in here. So let's see. Hello to some of my favorite beings on earth. That means you too, Stephen. Oh. <laughs> oh. I just wanted to update you guys and give a few more details on my situation. I met you both at the Portland live show and briefly mentioned my house burning down <sighs> and how amazing the Portland murderinas have been. So she... The Portland Murderinos, like, helped her with everything. Oh. Not only did they immediately jump into action and get me food, clothing, cat supplies, and toiletries, they were also there for me emotionally. I have horrible chronic anxiety, and I know I would not have made it through the past month calmly if it weren't for my amazing Murderino friends. I'm settling into a new, a new apartment finally, and my kitty Crookshanks is still a <laughs> hilarious asshole, which is a good thing, of course. On top of all of this amazingness, they have come through yet again for my coworker and fellow murderino who has been harassed lately by her ex-boyfriend. The Portland murderinas have given her lawyer Reno help, sent her a doorbell camera and sat with her for five hours at the courthouse while she obtained a restraining order Jesus. against him. Amazing. I just had to let you know how much we both appreciate this community uh, you have created and how incredible the women of this group are. I'm extremely grateful to them and to you guys. Thank you for being wonderful and helping us to SSDGM. P.S. I'm originally from Tennessee and have only lived in in Portland for five months and the community here is literally the only reason I have friends in the city that's amazing love Jess that's so good I, wow what a beautiful ending I to that remember awful story. Her. I know yeah. and I love that she was saying how she was just new to the city and like those are the people who came to fucking help her. Yeah. It's incredible. That's beautiful. And that I would want to say, because she said she wouldn't have been able to get through it calmly without those people. Yeah. But you also have to remember, you're not supposed to get through really tragic <laughs> events in your life calmly. True. This is when you get to freak out yes. and you get to be dependent. And don't hold yourself to those ridiculous standards. You, something terrible happened to you. You're lucky enough to have people that are there to help you. But you're not supposed to be fucking calm. If you need to scream at the sky, your house burned down. You get to. That's really lovely. That's yeah. true. I appreciate that. I'm always trying to keep my shit together and not like seem like a like a monster or depressed person in front of Vince. But it's like, well, sometimes I'm a fucking depressed person, right? And it's like in trying to control it in some ways, you can't yeah. control it in other ways. It's it's a nice like noble idea, yeah. But then it just creates too much pressure, right? You know what I mean? There's no need dealing with your fucking house running down, and you don't expect him to do that for you. No. He doesn't have to be like Mr. Perfect all the time. Well. <laughs> Be, I just want to say it'd be it, nice. You know, I just want to say one quick message to Vince. It would be nice if you could just try. Tighten up your game a little bit for me, <laughs> for this marriage I'm not in. <laughs> All right. Uh, send us your emails at myfavoritemurder at gmail. And thank you for sending these wonderful stories yeah. in and stay sexy. And don't get murdered. Goodbye. Goodbye.